Hey everybody, welcome to PC Perspective. I'm Ryan Shrout. Today we're going to talk about the latest Intel high-end desktop processors, the Core i9-7980 Extreme Edition, also known as the Core i9-7980XE, and the Core i9-7960X. These are Intel's 18-core and 16-core Skylake X processors, uh, respectively, um, meant to finally reclaim that performance crown from AMD's Ryzen Threadripper parts, like the 1950X that were released just a couple of months back. So, a, a quick overview, if, if you didn't follow the, the release of the Core i9-7900X, Intel announced an entire bevy of new processors in this new X20, X299 Skylake X platform, right? So everything from uh, the Core i7-7800X to the 7900X, and then 7920, 40, 60, and 80. Uh, we've got... We, <laughs> core counts from 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, and 18. Every kind of a, a little category of processor count and performance level that you could want, they have an option for. Now the problem for Intel is that with the release of Threadripper, uh, 16 core and 12 core variants, AMD actually became the highest performing high-end desktop processor on the market. Uh, and that's not something that Intel was used to, right? They created this HEDT market and they're used to having the, the highest end flagship processors, even above what you get with the mainstream parts like the Core i7 7700K or 67. 100K or whatever have you. Um, so even though the initial release of the Ryzen 7, like the 1800X with its eight core part, put some pressure on Intel's high-end desktop market on the low side, they still had their 10 core 6950X and they were able to, to dominate that market. Well, after Threadripper, that was no longer the case. One of the problems Intel set up for themselves, though, is they released the pricing of their parts well in advance, well before the Threadripper parts were released. So we knew that the Core i9-7980XE was going to be a $2,000 processor and the 7960X was going to be $1699. So $1999 and $1699 compared to AMD's Threadripper, which was $999 for the 1950X 16 core and $799 for the 1920X the 12 core. So Intel is going to be at a severe cost disadvantage with this release, but they are hoping that the performance delta is enough to tide some people over. Uh, for Skylake X in general, you do get a host of new features with this. We mentioned this in the 7900X review. You've got AVX 512 support, uh, a new cache hierarchy that more uh, targets single-threaded performance as opposed to multi-core performance, multi-threaded performance. There's a new mesh interconnect that kind of uh, better balances the workload inside the die. Turbo Boost Max 3.0 was improved to get top clocks out of your two best cores as opposed to just your one best core. You get speed shift. You're still on the X299 platform, which we've got here that we looked at with the uh, 7900X review. This is the Asus X299 Deluxe motherboard. These are high cost boards. Every, you know, for both X299 for Intel and X399 for AMD, these are expensive motherboards, right? You're looking at 300 to 350 kind of is your minimum entry point most of the time. And you're going up to like six, $600 for some of these. Uh, but this is here and here we've got our 7980 XE, and then our box here, we've got our 7960, but they look just again like the 7900X. From a performance standpoint, and this is where it really matters, Intel's in an interesting spot. They actually do better on single-threaded performance compared to Threadripper than they do on multi-threaded. Because of Intel's architecture, they're able to run at very high clock speeds and their turbo boost capabilities allow them to run at very high clock speeds even when they're running at an 18 core design. So uh, for example, the Max Turbo Boost 3.0 Turbo Boost Max 3.0 clock speed for the 7980 and the 7960 are both 4.4 gigahertz, which is actually really, really high. That's only 100 megahertz less than the 7900X uh, and even 100 megahertz less than the 7820X as well. So that high clock speed, as well as the already better IPC that we get on Intel's parts compared to AMD's Ryzen and Zen architecture, means that single threaded performance in Cinebench or our, our, our our audacity testing, uh, oof, tough to say. Uh, and even some applications, you know, some software suites like Sysmark, Intel's gonna have a significant advantage, up to 30, 35% in some areas. When we look at multi-threaded, where the clock speeds have to come down for Intel to get 16 and 18 cores on their processor all running at the uh, right temperature levels, um, you're looking at, you know, these have base clocks of 2.6 and 2.8. They're running above that in these workloads, closer to like three and a half gigahertz. Um, and even if something like Cinebench, which is 
Cinebench and Pava are kind of those stereotypical, multi-threaded, very scalable workloads. You're looking at maybe a 10% advantage for the 7980 XE, the 18 core over AMD's 16 core 1950X. So there is a difference there. It's they were able to reclaim the performance ground, but it's it's a moderate gain to say the least. And when you take into account the cost of that, the performance per dollar metrics are still very heavily in AMD's favor. The Ryzen Threadripper processors offer a better performance per dollar metric than either the 16 or the 18 core processors from Intel. Power consumption wise, the these two parts uh, are basically on par with Threadripper. They um, are, are doing essentially the same kind of uh, wattage numbers. When you do overclocking on these though, um, you're going from like 180 watts of power draw to like 350 watts power draw on these. We got all cores running at 4.3 gigahertz on this, which actually brings about like pretty stellar performance. Um, but you are, you need to have active cooling on those VRMs. We had a fan pointed at them directly. And just be aware of how much power draw you are pulling through this motherboard. Um, you know, didn't hear any like rumors of anybody's boards dying or anything like that, but I would start to worry when you're putting, you know, almost 400 watts of power through a CPU socket. So keep that in mind. At the end of the day, Intel's release here does exactly one thing, and it's really what they wanted to do. They wanted to be able to claim, uh, reclaim the performance crown for these high-end desktop markets. And they were able to do that. Really, both the 16-core and the 18-core parts are going to be faster uh, than AMD's Threadripper processors up to 16 cores as well, both single-threaded and multi-threaded workloads in general. The problem is, uh, if you're not a consumer who has you know, unlimited budget or spares no expense on any of these designs, if you care about the value of your performance, even if you know you're building an expensive system, Threadripper is still going to have the advantage. Cost per performance uh, is going to be in AMD's favor for the foreseeable future unless we see some magical shift to these performance drops. Uh, so that's pretty much what we've got for you today. I encourage you to go to the full review over at PCPer.com. We've got all the benchmarks that we would normally include in our CP reviews over there. Uh, you can see our performance per dollar metrics, all that type of stuff, overclocking results and those metrics as well. Impressive performance when you push 500, 400 watts through a CPU, but uh, some efficiency drops happen as well. So check that out. It's at PCPer.com, and we'll talk to you next time, guys. Thanks.